Hello and welcome to Sharp Ends. These are my thoughts about the three knives I took on the Texas 200, which if you don't know is a 200 mile race along the coast of Texas from Port Maho uh, sorry, what was it? Port Mansfield all the way up to uh, Magnolia Beach. So I took the three knives in my collection, which are known for their waterproofness. Um, and I got back two days ago and I since cleaned them. Uh, it was about six days on the water. I used one of these knives. I ended up using one of these knives more than the other two. Uh, so first I'm going to start with the Spidey Chef. Um, I like this knife. Um, it's really good for cooking. It's really good for uh, being a chef and it's got a good action and it's got a good shape for slicing and cooking things. Um, however, as far as being on a boat and using it as a practical knife, uh, I found that it doesn't really have the blade shape that you need in an emergency situation for cutting a rope uh, or for poking holes. Um, this is pointy, but not quite pointy enough. Um, and as far as like taking an apple, which I did every day, or an orange, uh, and slicing it up into slices. It's okay if you're working on a cutting board, but just doing it in your hand, I actually found it less useful. Um, as far as rust resistance, there wasn't a blemish on this when I opened it up. Nothing had gone wrong whatsoever with this. Uh, it acted very well. So I think that as far as like carrying this on a sailboat, not necessarily uh, your best choice, but Keeping it in your kitchen uh, setup for camping is definitely a good choice. Um, so that's the Spidey Chef. And this is, of course, LC200N, which is a super steel that is uh, almost entirely rust free. This here is the Quiet Carry Drift. Um, and I like this knife a lot. I like its action, uh, I like its shape, I like that it's spicy. It flips right open either direction. Uh, using it on the boat for a number of different uses was good. It was awesome. I will say that the inside, uh, when I took this apart, the LC200N, which you can kind of see on the inside here, uh, basically this is LC200N here and Vanek steel uh, for the blade, I did find some corrosion and it was where the LC200N met up with the uh, different parts inside here underneath the liner and also where the bearings, uh, or the phosphor bronze bearings uh, met with the steel. I found a little bit of rust in there, which I found very surprising. It also locked up pretty fast. Like I was wearing these in my pants while I sailed, so there was definitely some they got dunked, all of these knives got dunked in salt water. And this one uh, locked up pretty fast as far as not being able to flick it open after using it a few times for making sandwiches, cutting up apples, cutting rope, being in the salt water. It just, the action got worse. Now I did rinse it out with some uh, fresh water and the action got better, but it never got to the smoothness that it was originally. Finally, that brings me to what ended up being my favorite knife on the entire trip, and that is the uh, Waypoint, the Quiet Carry Waypoint, uh, titanium scales, Vanek steel again. The inside is LC200N, and this knife has a hollow ground, unlike these two other knives, and it just works so well. Uh, it works really good for jobs where you gotta poke in and make a cut. It works really great for slicing up uh, apples and oranges, were great for cutting ropes. Action stayed really well uh, for most of the trip. At one point it did get a little gummed up, but this was after hard use, lots of dunks. I ended up using this one the most on the entire trip because it just felt so right to me. However, after I rinsed it out with some water, it was fresh water, it, the action came back to almost 100%. My only gripe with this knife is that I can't finger flick it with my with my right hand. Uh, I can finger flick it with my left hand and I can open it up with 
my thumb with my left hand, and I am ambidextrous. So I always find that interesting that there are some knives like this where it's okay to use my thumb to open it with my left hand, but when I'm using it with my right hand, I can't get my finger under there to really finger flick it. I don't have that problem with the drift. I can finger flick this with my left hand, no, uh, my right hand, no problem. And obviously I can do the same with my left hand, no problem. So final conclusions. I think that the Spidey Chef makes an excellent camp cooking utensil. If you're gonna be taking something and you want something light and small and a chef's tool and you're cooking out in the wilderness, this is the knife for you. I was a little disappointed with this knife, honestly, even though I do love it and I love the way that you can choke up with it. It's got that extra finger choil and everything else. The way that it lost its action so early in the trip and wasn't really recoverable after that point, even after cleaning out with fresh water and the fact that it had rust in there uh, where the phosphor bronze washers met the steel was honestly disappointing to me and surprising. Uh, I will still use this knife and I think I will use it in fresh water only. I don't think that this is a saltwater knife. I think this is gonna be a great knife that I wanna take when I go kayaking or canoeing in fresh water. And as far as saltwater is concerned, this knife wins the day, hands down. I wish that the titanium scales had a little bit texture, uh, but otherwise, I don't mind. I also wish, and this is strange to say, that it had a lanyard hole because although this clip is very easy to use, I found myself using this knife at the bow of my boat to fix rigging and I, there was no lanyard there. And when you're trying to do rigging over a move, on a moving boat going eight, 10 knots and you have a knife that isn't attached to you physically, you get a little scared. Now I can attach a lanyard to here, but it doesn't make it very easy to carry. All right, thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that was helpful and join me next time.